Hey everybody, welcome back to my book chat channel. So, this is another book review for Holler Con Col bleh, Harper Collins Canada called Good Company by Cynthia Sweeney. And I will have, as usual, a picture of the book up so you can admire the um, cover and check out the author for yourself. So, as per usual, I will cl quickly run through the synopsis and go from there. So, Flora has been happily married for more than 20 years, but everything she thought she knew about herself, her marriage, and her relationship with her best friend Margot is upended when she stumbles upon an envelope containing her husband's wedding ring, the one he claimed he lost one summer when their daughter Ruby was five. Flora and Julian struggled for years, scraping together just enough acting work to raise Ruby in Manhattan and keep Julian's small theater company, Good Company, afloat. A move to Los Angeles brought their first real career successes, a chance to breathe easier and a reunion with Margot, now a bona fide television star. But has their new life been built on lies? What happened that summer all those years ago, and what happens now? This story follows a young couple who do what they can to put together acting jobs to, um, for themselves to be able to raise their young five-year-old daughter, um, which turns out to be quite the mighty struggle in that kind of world. And it kind of gives you a little bit of a light on, or it sheds a little bit of light into what that life might be like, the unstableness of it, the unpredictability, especially when you're trying to raise a family at the same time. And, um, you know, there's many that thrive on that kind of environment, and then there's those who don't, with the constant struggle of looking for the next role or next job, and uh, it's definitely a unique situation and not always ideal. But again, there's those who thrive on it and those who don't, and uh, like I said, it was definitely interesting to have a light um, thrown on another perspective of what that might look like. Um, I really did enjoy the main character, Flora, who, um, they followed primarily through the bulk of the story, and between her and her daughter, Ruby, I think are my top two favorite characters. I really enjoyed them. Um, there was just so many good and pure things that flowed in around them, especially the young one. Um, children especially, I find, um... Only children tend to bring just a certain amount of light and, um, I don't know, just something about them when, they, you know, they sort of touch your life and they just bring about a certain feeling or sensation and it's just a really neat thing. So, based on that concept by itself, I found that for sure Ruby and Flora were my two favorite characters. Um, which was a nice change because I found that I didn't like most of the characters through the story. Um, mostly because, as far as I'm concerned, none of them were loyal, whether it be to themselves or to other people. Um, they didn't seem to have any boundaries. It made me really not like those particular characters, um, specifically Margot or Julian or some of the other smaller characters that were a part of um, a lot of the ugliness that was going on throughout the story. Um, so, for... That particular reason by itself, I can't say that I was really fond of those characters, but it really made me enjoy the main two, Flora and Ruby, more. I probably would say that my most favorite part of the story, though, was the ending and just how it was done. Um, it reminded me a lot of the movie Stepmom. And for those who may or may not have seen it, it's just a movie with Julie Roberts and a few other um, known actors from back in the day. And... At the end of that film, they did sort of a, a subtle wrap-up where they gathered everyone around the sofa and they took a photo. And that photo it concluded the movie in such a way that it wasn't a concrete pat here, this is the end of the story, but rather a simple summary of the feelings and sensations you got out of that moment. There was some happiness, there was some sadness, and it just gave a sense of conclusion rather than a concrete one. And that same kind of concept was used here at the end of the story. Um, the ending was, you know, again, not done in a concrete way, um, but in a subtle ending where it was more of a feeling than anything else. 
Um, you could feel what was being saved, what was being let go of, the changes in the air, some happy moments, some sad. And uh, it brought it all together and it was something that you could really feel out of that moment. And so I really felt that in that way the book was very well written. I thought that the characters were well done. The world building was well done. You really could feel or be a part of what was going on just about every step of the way. Um, <clears throat> and I thought that was a really nice way to end the book. So, um, yeah, I am rating this a four out of five stars. And, um, yeah, I definitely look forward to uh, reading more from this author. And again, this was a book review for HarperCollins Canada, and I'm incredibly grateful for them sending me a physical arc to read and explore. So big shout out and thank you to them. I look forward to reading more and you will hear more book reviews from them or from me from them in the future. So I thank you all so much for tuning in and I will be back soon with another book review. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Happy reading!